What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Yammy Noob. Today, we're doing another episode of the Yam Can. These are our live streams we do for our Discord members. If you want the chance to join up on these and actually hang out with me and interact and, and enjoy all the fun stuff we do here, uh, join at yammynoob.co. You'll get to see these live when I do them on stream. You'll get to interact with me. I've actually just been hanging out with the folks for about a good 10 minutes or so before we started the stream. And you guys will have to excuse me because my allergies and my eyes are really acting up. So if I pull off my glasses and scratch my eyes, that is why they are so itchy. But today we have news from Kawasaki. They're dropping a bunch of new models, new in parentheses and in quotations, whatever you want. Uh, but we're gonna chat about them today. Lots to discuss, a lot of new updates from Kawasaki and there's nothing to it but to do it. So let's get into it. All right, folks, so I'm looking over here on my laptop, so if I don't look at this camera, I'm so sorry, but uh, we're looking at all the news from Kawasaki, updated 2023 models. The first one I wanted to chat about is the kind of new KLX 230. Um, so basically what Kawasaki's doing here is they now have this kind of dual purpose uh, KLX 230. They're, they're kind of moving into this Super budget friendly dual sport option with that 230 cc 229 cc single cylinder engine and you know It's it's an interesting idea, right? It's an interesting idea to put out a super cheapo dual sport so that people can get into it and have fun Because as many of you know the adventure segment and the off-road segment is growing It's one of the only segments in motorcycling that is growing that is not stagnating or decreasing in sales So I think it's a good idea for Kawasaki to be doing this and to try to sell more KLX's there are also S versions of the KLX 230 now. That's gonna make it a little bit more approachable. It's gonna have a lower seat height. It's gonna be a little bit easier to ride. So for those of you who are vertically challenged, maybe looking at getting a dual sport, um, a KLX 230S might be a great option. Or those who are maybe younger riders, you know? Um, the new KLX 230S actually, for Caleb who asked me on stream, what is the new seat height? On the S, it's 32.7 inches, folks. That is just like a hair more than like a Ninja 400 or something like that. For a dual sport bike, that's pretty awesome. My Husky 501 has like a 38 inch seat height. So 32.7 is a very, very approachable seat height for most people, but it's gonna compromise the travel, right? The suspension travel. So you're looking at 6.2 inches of travel in the front and 6.6 .6 inches of travel in the rear. Compare that to the usually 10 plus inches of travel you get on a proper uh, dual sport motorcycle or something like that. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you uh, kind of take that into consideration if you're to buy these bikes. Now, one of the silliest options that Kawasaki has released, and it's kind of, it's kind of a funny thing, honestly. They're doing a 2023 Kawi KLX 230 SM. So this is now the absolute budget-friendly uh, supermoto option from Kawasaki, which is bizarre because they still sell the KLX 300 supermoto, which is weird. Um, it's, it's really strange that Kawi has decided to, to put out this uh, KLX 230 supermoto. So it's that same 233cc air-cooled single, electric start as well, so no kickstart, but it's gonna come with the 17-inch wheels front and rear. So if you want that supermoto thing and you wanna spend $52.99 for it, folks, you can have it. It is gonna be not nearly as punchy as a real supermoto. I use the word real in quotations. You look at stuff like the DRZ 400 supermotos or even the converted supermotos or a Husky 500 or a KTM 500 or even a 350. The whole thing about a supermoto is how much just punch they have. You know, they hit so hard, they're super lightweight. This is gonna give you the same handling feel as a supermoto, but in my opinion, it's not gonna give you the gratifying, wheelie happy supermoto thing that a lot of these single cylinder engines are gonna provide. Um, I just think that it's just, it's kind of peculiar to make a 230 SM when you already sell a 300 SM, which isn't that much more money. As far as I know, the 300 SM is under $6,000 as well. So I'm not really quite sure what Kawasaki's thinking in making a 230 SM. But it is cool, we got 37 millimeter inverted forks on this bad boy, so that's kind of nice, you know, over the other one that has the, the kind of dual sport right side up, you know, rubber boot kind of setup on it. Um, but 
I think that Kawasaki's doing the right move, and they're kind of doing a Royal Enfield move here in that they're making a, like super accessible entry-level bikes for people. Um, they're not trying to reinvent the wheel. They're just like, okay, what can we put out on the market that's cheap, that's fun, that people will, will get interested in? That's how you win, folks. That's how you win. I was talking on stream earlier about how Yamaha needs to come out with the WR350 and a WR500 to compete in that KTM space and maybe bring out a WR230 or a 220 or whatever it is to compete with the Cowies in this in this market because it's bizarre that Kawasaki is the only manufacturer right now doing this kind of stuff. I don't see Honda making these like sub 250cc dual sport supermoto options. Cowie's kind of learning how to dominate this space a little bit. Honda's got the CRF 300L, but you know, it's nothing that's going to be competing in this in price. I mean, the CRF 300L is probably over $6,000 if I remember correctly, but someone uh, is going to correct me either on stream or in the edit. So we'll figure it out. Now, moving on. Kawasaki's also launching the new Kawasaki KLR 650S. Uh, many of you know KLR is the ancient dinosaur that Kawasaki's holding on to. They've done some updates for the current model years. Uh, the, there was famously fuel injection added to this motorcycle. It's still plagued by some of the 80s issues that these bikes had. But the new S variants, kind of like the dual sport variants we were talking about, is now a little bit lower. So that's the big difference in the S model here. Uh, it's going to feature a lower front and rear suspension, still offering 6.7 inches of travel while the rear sits at 7 inches. And it's still got a 21-inch front end and a 17-inch rear wheel. And uh, that standard KLR 650S is going to come in at $6,899. Uh, and you can get it in the Pearl Storm Gray for $7,199. So again, super budget-friendly bikes from Kawasaki. Definitely a strategy they're pursuing. They're pursuing these very, very cheap motorcycles because... It just makes sense. You can sell so many more of them. However, one thing I want to point out, with the 230s, when you lower them, they're kind of little dual sport bop around bikes, whatever. You know, you're going to have fun with that. It doesn't really matter. And, and you're going to be spending a lot of time off road. So it's, it's not as important of what I'm about to say. The KLR 650 is a bike that spends a lot of time on road. It's definitely a 50-50 bike, an adventure touring bike, uh, you know, for some people, a long distance touring bike even. And when you lower a bike this much, you do compromise its handling. Um, this is something I've talked about before, but lowered motorcycles typically have very compromised handling and they typically have situations where they just don't perform as predictably as you would expect. I hope the Kawasaki with all their engineering prowess has been able to dial that out of these motorcycles, but kind of remains to be seen. I'd have to ride one of these lowered uh, KLRs to see if they can actually uh, you know, work in the way that they're supposed to work. But it's great too, because when you lower these bikes, again, the seat height becomes more approachable. You get more people to buy them. When you get that price to be approachable as well, um, that's going to be a great thing on the KLRs here. Now, moving on, we've got the 2023 Kawasaki Ninja 650. Not too much has changed on this. However, you are going to see the addition on this model of KTRC, the Kawasaki Traction Control System. Now, a lot of people know that when we had the RS660 uh, in 2021, I mentioned how a motorcycle with 100-ish horsepower, it wasn't really all that necessary to have traction control systems. With 100 horsepower, you can definitely manage the traction with your right wrist. It's not a situation where you need to rely on computers to do that kind of thing for you. Um, I don't really think that you need, especially for the Ninja 650, you really need any kind of traction. This this feels like Kawasaki is just trying to figure out ways to add more features to their bikes without expending much money. And that makes a ton of sense. Kawasaki has all this prowess and they've brought down the 4.3 inch TFT and the twin LED headlights. And now they got the KTRC on there. All of a sudden this motorcycle looks a lot more premium than the R7 even for example, right? The R7 doesn't have traction control. It doesn't have a TFT display, all this stuff. But if you ride them back to back, you quickly realize which one is a more sport bike and the other is a more like sport touring bike, you know? The Ninja 650 has always been a kind of do everything commuter kind of bike, you know what I mean? It's not something that 
is really designed for a racetrack, even though it looks very racy and sporty, but that's maybe where they win, right? It's someone's first motorcycle. They want something that has the appearance of a sport bike, but that performs much more like a beginner bike. Caleb says, TC on the Ninja 650 is just an insurance discount. It's the ultimate practical bike. Now that's a good idea. Um, I don't know if you could get insurance discounts for that, but that could be good. So it's saying here that mode one facilitates acceleration out of corners by maximizing forward drive from the rear wheel, making it ideal for sport riding, but mode two reduces engine output when excessive wheel spin is detected to help riders navigate wet pavement. Riders also have the option to turn the system off. So it's pretty good that you have the option is kind of like this wet weather bike, right? You're kind of like, oh, okay, like I'm a new rider. I am cautious in the wet. Let's just add another layer of security. You have ABS and then KTRC. That's gonna keep me safe in wet weather. You know what? That's a good thing. That's a good thing to try to keep riders safe. But in the idea that it's supposed to be a sport bike edition, not really sold on that to say. Also going to get it in some new color schemes as well. It's got this gray, white, and amber kind of colorway, which is interesting. Um, that's pretty cool. The Z650 is going to get the same treatment as well, the KTRC situation. Uh, so you're also going to get that. And then um, we've also got the new... Kawasaki KX450SR, so their motocross bike. Uh, lots to say about this, but I am not the motocross expert. I don't know much about the 450 class, so I will leave that for you guys at home. So guys, that's gonna wrap up my thoughts on this news from Kawasaki of the 230SM, the uh, KLR 650S, these lowered, more entry-level accessible motorcycles. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. And uh, for all the Discord boys, give you a little uh, a little peace sign over here. We'll hang out for a little bit after I polish off this video. And uh, thanks so much for checking out the video, guys. Be sure to subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Well, look at you. You've made it to the end of another Yammy Noob video. You should consider yourself pretty lucky because I have curated this one right over here for you to continue watching. It's probably just as good as the one you just saw. Unless you hated the one you just saw. I don't know, maybe leave me a comment down below about how you much you hated it as well too. Or just keep watching this one. Make sure you keep watching Yammy Noob. Don't forget to keep watching Yammy Noob. That's the most important thing. Keep watching Yammy Noob.